Joseph Fink couldn't be here today, so instead it's me, Joseph Fink. We'll have some more big news about the Welcome to Night Vale novel coming out this October in the next episode. But for now, after 76 shows in 11 different countries, we are retiring our touring live show, The Librarian. And as of today, you can get a recording of it with a full cast and live music on iTunes or at nightvale.bandcamp.com where you can pay whatever over 90 minutes of new Night Vale is worth to you. There are also three other live shows on iTunes and at nightvale.bandcamp.com, so if you haven't heard those, you should hear those. Uh, Now that The Librarian is done, we are writing a brand new full-length live script and taking it to 41 U.S. cities this March, April, and May. Now, this tour will have live music and a bunch of guest stars. This is actually the biggest show we've ever taken on the road. Don't end up like Seattle. Get your tickets before the show sells out. I think at this point, nine cities have sold out. Welcome to nightvale.com for the schedule and to buy tickets. Tickets. Welcome to Nightvale.com. We have a store. Hey, speaking of the librarian, we put the last remaining stock of librarian tour posters up on our store. It's a very limited amount. It's an amazing piece by Jessica Hayworth. Once the stock we have left sells out, it will be gone forever. So to get that and so many other things, go to welcome to Nightvale.com and click on store. Hey, if you like what we do here with the show and you want to help us give praise to the Lord of Darkness, then please consider signing up for a small monthly donation. We really do depend on all of you. Uh, Those who donate a little more get a special personal audio thank you from Cecil himself. Go to welcometonightvale.com and click on donate to do that thing. Joseph Fink will be back next time, but for now, this is Joseph Fink signing off. And hey, thanks. There is no part one. This is part two. Welcome to Night Vale. Listeners, I won't waste your time recapping everything that happened in the earlier part of this broadcast. There were so many events of such tremendous impact and significance that they are surely locked forever in your memory. So, let us, a town with an imperiled mayor and a brutally injured sheriff, a town under attack, a town in the middle of something that we are seeing through from start to finish. Let us continue right where we left off. Harrison Kipp, adjunct professor of archaeology at the community college, announced once again that he is super sorry about accidentally raising the sand golem by whispering sweet nothings to that talisman he found out in the desert. The team of six wealthy sponsors who backed this project, and who he has only ever spoken to by phone, told him that this was what mysterious talismans liked. Talismans love to be flirted with in a sexy whisper. The anonymous sponsors had told him, although they never mentioned that doing so would cause a sand golem to rise and turn against the humans around it. My bad, Harrison said gravely, continuing, most deaf, my bad, before fleeing into the desert, receding from human form to distant human form to dot to smudge to misplaced pixel on the horizon line to memory, to vague recollection, to an idea just out of reach, to something I knew long ago but now cannot grasp enough to feel its absence. The sand golem, along with thousands of Angora rabbits, which were released from the Night Vale Petting Zoo by unknown malicious parties, have reached the upper floors of City Hall and are attacking anything that moves, or doesn't move, or just exists anywhere on the spectrum of motion, with its huge sand fists and their soft, harmless fur. Director of Emergency Press Conferences, Pamela Winchell, held a non-emergency press conference, 
explaining that the situation seemed too urgent to distract everyone with the usual emergency press conference. She read a statement written by Mayor Dana Cardinal, indicating that the mayor has given up on her previously announced plan to barricade the door, and then found her subsequently announced plan to hide was ruined when she released the statement announcing it. And so now, she is announcing her current plan, which is to fight. To fight and to win. Listeners, I would gladly help the mayor, but as I've been regularly expressing throughout the morning's tragedies and this afternoon's attack, I have conflicted feelings here. Yes, Mayor Dana is a dear friend and one of the citizens of this town I trust the most, but, but, the last time I helped her, it was done without my will. Not against my will. Without. I was used as a puppet to save a good friend. And good friend though she is, it is not a feeling I wish to experience again. I'll tell you what I think it is. I believe the culprit is whoever bought Lot 37 from the Sheriff's Secret Police Auction last year. Lot 37. 37. One radio host. One Cecil Palmer. One me. I believe whoever owns that lot has manipulated me into the role of hero. Like an action figure limp in the sticky hands of a child. I do not wish to be manipulated again, except in that way that Anyone who lives in an all-seeing, authoritarian state is constantly manipulated for their own health and well-being. Such is the wish of all people, to be manipulated in ways that are good for them. But, all to say, maybe someone else can help Dana this time. More and more on this soon, as there has been much and much before. Construction work is already commencing at the bowling alley after the shocking incident we reported on earlier today. I know I'll never look at one of those ball return machines the same way again. Teddy Williams said the space should again be available for bowling by Wednesday at the latest, that league night is set to continue as scheduled, and that he's had enough. Just enough. There's only so much one person, you know, that one person can take. And that limit was reached several months ago, and he's just been coasting. You know, coasting, trying, doing his best. And now this? Now this. Right? Now this. He doesn't know what next. What now? He doesn't know what he's going to do. Probably not this anymore, he doesn't think. How old do you have to be to retire? How old is he? He doesn't know the answer to those questions, but he'll find out, and then he'll know, you know, he'll know. And again, league night is continuing as scheduled. Which, whew, wouldn't be a good week for me without league night. And now another word from our sponsors. You already know who we are. We introduced ourselves earlier. Let's not waste time reiterating the benefits of our product, how little it costs, how easy it is to get, how unwise it would be not to buy it, and where exactly we took your loved ones. Instead, let's concentrate on the legally required disclaimers. We, uh... We forgot to do those, and our lawyer got really mad about it. Have you ever seen a mad lawyer? Their ears stand straight up, and they won't stop barking at you. It's terrifying. So, we need to add that using our product could result in sterility, senility, hearing loss, vision loss, finger decomposition, major toe swelling, like a lot of toe swelling, 
That might not sound like a big deal, but wait until you see how big your toes get. Scratchiness of the throat, throat loss, heart palpitations, and minor night screaming. Also, when we said hearing loss, we meant you'll be able to hear loss. As plants age, as pets die, as marriages break apart, or evolve, or settle from a fluttering of hands to a loose intertwining of fingers, as children leave home to go wherever it is that children go after the age of 10, all of these common forms of loss you will be able to hear, it will be deafening. Oh, we could go on all day about the ways our product will severely ruin you, physically and emotionally, but what are you going to do? Not buy it? I think that you and your, for the moment, safe, Loved ones know that you will buy our product no matter what we say. So, let's not waste any more time. Our lawyer has stopped barking. Buy our product. This has been another word from our sponsors. Oh, I'm sorry, listeners. There is a knocking on my studio window. It is a man in a tan jacket holding a deer skin suitcase. It is difficult to describe his features as they escape my mind the moment my eyes leave his face. He is waving, indicating that he would like to come in and speak to me, and presumably to all of you. Um, yeah, come on in. But how would we even get there? I've never heard of that place. I... I don't remember what I was just saying. Um, I think someone was just speaking to me and to all of you out there about something that seemed very important, but now... Now I can't remember... You all heard him, too. Do you remember what he said? Oh, why am I sweaty? I think I remember him offering me a note or some piece of paper. I didn't take it. Uh, maybe I should have taken it? I don't know. Speaking of notes, I am being handed another one by intern Hannah. Hopefully, it is better than the note she handed me this morning during the earlier section of this broadcast. That was such an awful note. I mean, I don't have to tell you, right? So sad. Sad and awful. You remember. Also kind of funny, though. Just a pretty sad, awful, funny note, really. Um, but this note... Well, it seems that... No. No, 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 no! It seems that once again, during this recent bit of missing time, brave radio host Cecil Palmer has stepped in and helped Mayor Cardinal fight off the Sand Golem and the Angora Rabbits. Cecil, showing strength beyond his stature, held the sand golem down while Dana wiped away the writing on its forehead that gave it unnatural life, dispersing it to inanimate sand. And then we just kind of shooed the rabbits. They were just rabbits, and even in great numbers were not at all threatening. This left the mayor safe, with only a few bumps and bruises and a wrecked office covered with sand that probably will never be completely cleaned away. Certainly better than what happened to the sheriff, that poor man. I'm being told that Mayor Cardinal indicated deep gratitude for my help. I'm being told this because I do not remember this. Because I am certain now the owner of Lot 37, the owner of Cecil Palmer, once again used me only to protect Dana. That is... Ugh, I'll have to think about what that is. But first, a continuation of our previous Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. 
Children, it's now time to go check on those glass vials we prepared earlier in the broadcast. If you mixed everything right and placed it in a warm, dry place like we told you to, you should be able to now observe the start of the tendrils. Don't get close to them. Those tendrils have a strong grip. One could call their grip unbreakable or even poisonous. You might also hear buzzing. Do you hear buzzing? Listen closely. Science is all about observation. Write down what the buzzing sounds like in detail. Draw a graph to show the buzzing. What the buzzing is telling you is that the thing in the vial has marked you as its prey. You need to run. Oh, you should have started running the moment you heard the buzzing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have said that before the rest of this stuff. If you don't hear anything, then congratulations. You can move on to the second part of the experiment. Lay down plastic sheeting in the room, and we'll be back to give you the full instructions later. This has been part two of the Children's Fun Fact Science Corner. This day started bad, and it does not appear to be getting better any time soon. I, however unwillingly and unconsciously, help the mayor fight off her attackers, and yet even that act was not enough to end this ordeal. Hiram McDaniels, literal five-headed dragon, and the faceless old woman who secretly lives in your home, both former mayoral candidates, have taken City Hall once again captive. Hiram is preventing anyone from entering the front door using his massive body, fire-breathing, and harsh language. Mayor Cardinal has issued a statement through her mouth, shouting out of an upper floor window that the faceless old woman is stalking her through City Hall. Dana can hear bare feet skittering across the hallway ceiling, can sense the memory of motion in the air when she turns, can feel breath on her neck, dry and cold, like breath never is. She has come for me! Dana shouted mayorally. I will not be able to avoid her forever. I will not be able to do anything forever. Hiram, in response to questions asked by a group of lightly scorched secret police currently trying to tase and arrest him, admitted that he and the faceless old woman have been conspiring against the mayor for quite some time. Convincing Pamela Winchell to enter a disastrous retirement, staging a blatantly consumerist Christmas display involving gift cards and an ancient monolith, freeing the antiques from their pen, funding the dig that led Harrison Kipp to find the sand golem's talisman, unsealing and freeing the army of tiny people under lane five of the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex this morning working to sabotage the ultimately successful defense led by the sheriff today against the tiny army, from which the sheriff miraculously emerged unscathed, then causing the saw cyclone that swept through the sheriff's office, not injuring him at all, but really messing up his draperies, and then, finally, sending the sheriff an angry letter which resulted in the serious paper cut he is currently recovering from. And now, all of these measures unsuccessful in removing Dana from power, Hiram and the faceless old woman have been left with no choice but to attack the mayor directly. Just try to stop us, said Hiram. Just try. I'd like to see you try, puny mortals! roared another one of his heads, although not the one you'd think. Well, certainly I won't try. I've had enough of this mayor-saving business. My job is to report. That is what I do, reporting. That is why they call me what they call me, a journalist. 
Now, let me report and only report. We are taking you all to the weather. Get stomped like a snake Lie down in the dirt Cling to my convictions Even when I get hurt Be an upstanding, well-loved man About town In your child's mind That's how it goes down but I try The losing side I don't want to die in here I don't want to die in here Drift down into the new dark light Without any reservations You found my breaking Congratulations Spent too much of my life now trying to play fair Throw my better self overboard Shoot at him when he comes up for air Come unhinged Get revenge I don't want to die in here pressure for years and years and years and years President of the fan club up there choking on his tears Let all the trash rain down From way up in the rafters I'm walking out of here in one piece Don't care what comes after Torch the bridge I don't want to die in here I don't want to die in here
Here I am, listeners. Whoever I am. Here it is, the me that is whichever me I am. You can guess what happened, I think. Once again, it was brave Cecil who saved the mayor, throwing his body between her and the wrath of the faceless old woman and Hiram. It was not an easy fight, and not an easy fight for me to remember. Here is what I know. Hiram McDaniels is no longer at City Hall. With my help, the secret police almost apprehended him, but our efforts while just enough to prevent his continued siege, were just under what was needed to capture a literal five-headed dragon. And in the scuffle, Hiram disappeared. He could be anywhere. Svitz? Lemuria? The secret lost pet city on the moon? Or even, still in Night Vale? Even that... Here is what else I know. The faceless old woman who secretly lives in all of our homes was unable to complete her malicious plans against our mayor, and is now secretly living in all of our homes still. She did not need to change anything in order to hide. These two rebels, who are against the mayor rightfully chosen for us by forces we do not understand, will not rest quietly. I have no doubt of it. I know that there is more coming, as always. This is what I know. Here is what I do not know. The owner of Lot 37, who bought me at that auction and did nothing with their prize for so long, only to now use me again and again with one purpose, to protect one person. Dana Cardinal. Mayor Cardinal. My friend. Here is who I do not know but thought I did. Dana Cardinal, my friend. And I am starting to fear, and I am starting to doubt, the owner of Lot 37. Could she be? Who else would be so invested in protecting her, and only her, Dana? Is it you? Could it be? It couldn't. It couldn't. It couldn't. But still, but still, huh. Stay tuned next for part three and part four and many more parts, each succeeding moment after the one before, and some you will hear and some you will not, and none of them will be true exactly, but all of them will be an honest attempt at the most accurate fiction possible. Good night to our recuperating sheriff. Good night to a mayor I once thought I knew. Good night to old woman Josie and the rest of the bowling team. I'll see you at league night. And good night, Night Vale. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Commonplace Books. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Joseph Fink. The voice of Night Vale is Cecil Baldwin. Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.info or at disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's weather was the world premiere of Heel Turn 2 by the Mountain Goats from their upcoming album, Beat the Champ. Find out more at mountain-goats.com. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcometonightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio. Check out welcometonightvale.com for more information on this show as well as all sorts of cool Night vale stuff you can own. And while you're there, consider clicking the donate link. That'd be cool of you. Today's proverb. History is written by the victors and then forgotten by the victors. And then the victors die too. <laughs> <laughs>